Today I will show you how to terminate high fiber count cables in Leviton's SDX large wall mount enclosure. High strand count fiber termination requires added space, cost, and expertise. When space and or cost is an issue, the Leviton SDX large wall mount enclosure provides a price conscious application in a smaller footprint. Please be aware that this installation should only be performed by experienced fiber optic technicians. To prepare the cables for termination, you will need some tools and consumables, including Arab and yarn scissors, a marking pen, lint-free wipes, isopropyl alcohol or fiber cleaning solution, disposal bin for fiber shards, four inch small tie wraps, and a work mat. When terminating high fiber count armored or outside plant cables, additional tools and consumables may be required. These include a flex conduit cutter, a sheath cutter, gel solvent, electrical tape, friction tape, a tape measure, and one quarter inch mesh expansion sleeve. A mass fusion splicer is also required during this termination process. The fusion splicing kit should include the splicing unit, a precision cleaver, a thermal stripper, and appropriate fiber holders. If terminated in loose tube fibers, a ribbonizing tool is also required. The parts that come with the SDX wall mount enclosure include the enclosure, wire management rings, Velcro tie wraps, and an instruction sheet for installing and configuring the unit. Also required for this termination are mass fusion splice trays, part number T6XRB-40Q. Each splice tray allows for the termination of 72 fibers. The enclosure can accept 24 trays when the bulkhead is removed for full fusion splicing configuration. Each tray requires six mass fusion splice sleeves, part number FSSRB-P40. Quantity 2 Splice Tray Hardware Mounting Kits, part number SPLMT-KIT, are required to mount the splice trays to the enclosure. Additionally, trunk clamp kits, part number 5RCMP-KIT, are required. At least two are needed depending on the diameter of bulk fiber cables being used. Other non-Leviton optional materials are, breakout kits are recommended for high count fiber optical cables greater than 144, or when subunit tubing is not present in the bulk cable. Organize and install the fiber groupings into the breakout legs. For such cables, the breakout head can be positioned outside the enclosure to maintain optimal routing space. When fiber subunits are in groups of 144, further breakout to increments of 72 fibers is required. Frication tubing or braided mesh tubing is recommended to protect groups of 72 fibers entering each splice tray. If no frication is used, Place friction tape at the tie-down point of each tray to protect each 72 fiber grouping from damage when secured to the tray. The first step is preparing the enclosure for splicing. Prior to mounting, remove the bulkhead by removing the four mounting screws as shown in the instruction guide. Install the 5.5 inch threaded bolts supplied in the splice tray hardware kit from the rear through the two mounting holes. Install the Velcro tie wraps for the splice tray stacks as shown in the instruction sheet provided with the enclosure. Configure the enclosure for full splicing as shown in the instruction sheet. The SDX wall mount enclosure has entrance points at the top and bottom corners. For best results and ease of accessibility, the trunk one and trunk two cables should route in the opposite directions, one clockwise, one counterclockwise, once in the enclosure. Trunks can both enter the enclosure from the same side or from opposite sides. First cut and install each entrance grommet onto each of the incoming trunk or group of trunks. The grommets can then be easily slid into place once the trunks are permanently secured to the enclosure. Due to the organizational requirements of so many fibers, Leviton recommends the following steps when preparing and terminating up to 1,728 ribbon fibers. Plan for one but no more than two slack loops in the enclosure prior to entering each splice tray. One slack loop typically allows for accessibility to a workbench, portable work stand, or transit case for fusion splicing. If space and cable length allows, removing the wall enclosure and placing it on a workbench is also an option. A minimum of three meters of fiber must be exposed from the outer jacket, central tube, or transition point of any furcating required. If a second slack loop is intended before entering the splice trays, an additional meter is required. Organize subunits by tray, working from the base outward, where the first subunit of fibers are terminated in the left stack, followed by the next subunit in the right stack. 
This allows subunits to be fully loaded into the enclosure while minimizing interference as the enclosure is populated. Temporarily install each stack of splice trays. This will allow pre-measuring of each breakout leg to the entrance point of each splice tray. Route the trunk one cables with the desired slack loop storage. Use a fairly wide path when routing to keep furcation tubes away from the entrances of the splice trays. And mark each subunit leg at the entrance point of the target splice tray. If the subunits are greater than 72 fibers, the grouping will need to be subdivided again into 72 fiber increments. Use furcation tubing, mesh expansion sleeve, or friction tape to provide protection and a tie-down point as the fibers enter the splice tray. Remove cables from the wire management rings and set aside for termination. Repeat the process for the trunk two cables, bringing the legs into the same end but opposite entrance of the target splice tray. Remove all trunk two cables for termination. Remove all splice trays for termination. Bring the first trunk one legs into tray one. Mark the jacket removal point of any furcation tubing and route according to the following diagram. Mark all ribbons just past the exit point of the target splice holder. Remove trunk one fibers from the splice tray. Repeat steps for trunk two cabling. Perform fusion splice of ribbon fibers according to the splicer manufacturer's instructions. Load each set of fibers into the splice sleeve holders upon completion populating the tray as splices are completed. Upon completion of each splice tray or pair of trays, route the trunk cables into the wire management rings and place the tray on the target mounting screw. If possible, Leviton recommends terminations be complete at the far ends of each installed cable and to test as you go. Testing in batches of 288 or 432 fibers provides the best opportunity to correct any mid-run performance issues before the entire enclosure is stacked, routed, and dressed. Upon placing of all splice trays, secure each stack with the wing nut and Velcro tie wraps. Use Velcro tie wraps to perform any necessary dressing of loose subunits or furcation tubes to protect fibers from inadvertent snagging. Learn more about the SDX wall mount enclosures and the SDX family of fiber solutions at leviton.com/sdx.